beat you. I will beat you. I will beat you. Leave me alone. No sense. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. No sense. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. No sense. You dead man. Today's video sponsor is GVG More, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. Hello, guys, it's Shinigen Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco. And welcome to my channel. So as for today's video, we have the review of the new drivers, the 23.4.3. And as I say in all my videos, 23 is the year, 2023, 4 is the month, April, and 3 is the revision in that same month, so the third revision of April. And also, if I look like shit, it's because I feel like it. Because <laughs> I have been up since the early hours in the morning um, and I've been working across all day testing the, the 6950 XT. It is now finally tested. Everything tested. Rasterization, ray tracing, um, stock overclock, overclock plus SAM. Everything is tested. Upscalers. It's done and I'm finally recording this right now because, well, you asked for it as you always do and I'm here. Not here. Not here. I'm here to deliver. Going back to the drivers once again, well, these drivers are WHQL signed once again, they are like the sixth or the seventh driver that is that has been H, uh, HWQL signed, sorry, so it means that Microsoft kind of approves these AMD drivers, it means that uh, overall they should be stable for most users, okay, some users might still have issues, okay, but overall it should be okay, overall. But I can tell you right away that these drivers have more good things than bad things. And for every manufacturer, that's a very good thing. But well, let's start with the release notes. And firstly, we have the highlights with support for Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And I actually asked AMD if they were actually sending uh, serial keys of this game to reviewers like me, but they said they didn't, they weren't at least. Uh, at least for now, uh, and I don't feel like spending that much amount of money just to test the game because I would most likely not play it, so uh, I will maybe wait some time before putting my hands on it and testing it, so... Well, it is what it is, but yeah. As for the fixed issues, we have the first one with red corruption may occur in World War Z Aftermath when using Vulkan API, and this has been due to some Vulkan extensions being actually added or kind of changed in the previous drivers, so that's an issue that actually came with the previous drivers, I believe, uh, and it was fixed now, so it's nice. And the second one is longer than expected shader compilation time when first launching The Last of Us Part 1. And The Last of Us already received a new update, I believe it's the 1.0.4, uh, and it actually brought way better textures, textures sorry, while consuming less VRAM, so it's a win-win situation. And on top of that, the shader compilation time now with the drivers already uh, takes uh, less than before, okay, so less time for the shader compilation with the new drivers and less time for the shader compilation with the new update as well, so it's a win-win situation once again. Great, but still we have some known issues. The first one is high idle power has situationally been observed when using select high resolution and high refresh rate displays on the Raiden RX 7000 series GPUs and once again this bug is here to stay. Once again, like I said in the previous video, I don't know if this has to do with the, with the RDNA 3 architecture, so if this is actually hardware-sided or software-sided, but I do believe it is software-sided because since the first, the first drivers that were released for the RDNA 3 GPUs, the power consumption has improved a lot. Okay, it has improved a lot from the first driver till now, at least for me, the idle power draw in normal situations improved a lot, the video playback power draw improved a lot, the power draw when locking the FPS also improved a lot, so they are getting in the right track, okay? But for some users, this might still be an issue. For me, I have 12 watts on idle with a 7900 XTX, so I'm fine. 
Video stuttering or performance drops may be observed during gameplay and video playback with some extended display configurations on the Raiden RX 7000 series GPUs, once again. Some virtual reality or applications may experience lower than expected performance on Raiden RX 7000 series GPUs. And I know that speaking is easy, it's easy to speak, it's harder to make things, but since I'm no, I'm no developer and I, and I don't really work at AMD, well, I must tell this once again, AMD, you need to fix the VR issues ASAP. Some people with the previous generation cards like the 6950 XT actually have higher VR performance than the 7900 XTX. Uh, and even people with lower tier cards, for example, I saw some random comments some like one month ago or some, something like that, sorry, uh, where I saw a guy saying that uh, he had the same VR performance with the 6800 that he has now with the 7900 XT, because once again the 7900 XT is performing worse than it should, otherwise it should be much, much faster in VR, uh, but AMD still has issues due to this uh, and they need to fix it because people buying VR headsets, people going into VR and they are um, they are more and more as the time marches on, um, they won't buy AMD due to that or they maybe they may buy the card but as soon as they test the card they will send it back and get an Nvidia GPU and that's a market share that AMD could actually grab uh, and instead they are giving more and more to Nvidia due once again to the newer cards and VR performance. But well, at least the 6000 series are selling like hotcakes. Brief display corruption may occur when switching between video and game windows on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6700 XT still, this bug is still happening sadly, and the last one is application crash may intermittently be observed when playing RuneScape on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 5700 XT. As for the important notes, we still have the fact that the factory reset is still temporarily disabled, and now we also have AMD is working with game developers of Hogwarts Legacy to resolve issues with water corruption on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 580. So if you have a 580 or a Polaris card or a Vega, if you have the water corruption issues, well, AMD is working directly with the Hogwarts Legacy developers in order to fix it. So those are good news. And well, as always, my experience with these drivers. Let's start with the bad ones because they're, they're fewer. Okay, the first one is that CRU is still not working for the RX 7000 series and as ToastyX says, the creator of CRU, it says that it has to do with AMD and not the resolution, the custom resolution utility itself, so AMD needs to fix it because I myself need to create the resolutions inside uh, inside the software, the AMD software, and I cannot, I cannot change the range, the free sync range of my monitor due to that because, well, AMD does not allow it in, this, in these newer cars. Maybe due to having a new display engine, I don't really know, but the fact is that it isn't working, and it should. And the second bad thing is that I still have to force enable the AMD Adrenaline software on the first run, but only on my on my main computer uh, with the 6950 XT. I had to force start once again the Adrenaline software uh, in order for it to actually run up. And after I force start it the first time, it will automatically boot up with Windows every time I turn on my computer. But if I don't do it for the first time, it just won't appear and it is annoying. It is annoying. On the other computer that I tested, the 5700 XT, it worked fine. But on my main one, not really. And the final one is not actually bad per se, uh, but it is uh, about the emulation. And the emulation was actually bad on the previous drivers. Uh, and I don't know, due to the Vulkan extensions once again. And I'm just gonna read this comment from Matthew Juarbe. I'm enjoying your videos more and more, and to give you a quick update, yes, the recent 23.4 updates in the past did break some Vulkan extensions that switch emulator, Ryujinx and Yuzu uses. I believe Ryujinx released a comment saying they did a temporary workaround, but that was before this new update. So I don't really know if it is fixed or not, but if you are actually using emulators and you're trying these drivers, let me know in the comment section if emulation is fixed or if it was never broken for you in the first stance. But I just want to know and I believe that the community wants to know as well. So, comment section. And as for the good things, well, we have, firstly, we have fixes. 
some fixes, some really important fixes for some people, not many, since this driver is actually the third of this month, which is not very usual from AMD, usually we have one or two, uh, so it is normal that we have less fixes. The second one is that the overclocking profiles and the overall stability of the overclocking profiles st seem to be a bit better, at least on my 6950XT, okay? Uh, meaning that I can actually use slightly lower voltage to achieve the same results with perfect stability, okay? While with the previous drivers, I actually needed a bit more voltage. But this is with my card, okay? So your card might be completely different. I'm just reporting what happened to me. We also have better temperatures both for the CPU and GPU, mostly on Dead Island 2 for example, and even in Modern Warfare 2 we have slightly lower CPU and GPU temperatures which is also very nice. Um, today instead of 7000 and 6000 series, I'm bringing 6000 and 5000 series in terms of performance, so let's see how's the performance with the 6950XT. Anyone injured? Uh, just a few bruises. I think we got lucky. I, I, I'm Michael. Hey, Amy. This is fucking tremendous! <laughs> Emma, darling, I'm so sorry about Robert. Why? I mean, this is all his fault, the selfish wanker! Will you stop standing there and find me some fucking shoes? Oh, hey. You know you got all, like, blood coming out of your ears. What? I can't hear you! I got blood coming out of my ears! Well, I mean, what are we going to do? And as you've seen overall, we have lower CPU and GPU temperatures and we have much better performance, much better, much higher FPS uh, in that Island 2 on the 6950XT, even though that the previous drivers already increased the performance of the 6000 and 7000 series GPUs. So uh, maybe going from let's say the 23.3.2 to these ones will improve the performance even more because from the 23.4.1 to the 23.4.2, the performance was increased in that island too. And now we have another performance boost, which is really good. But now we not, we not only have a performance boost, but we also have a frame pacing fixing, okay? As I told you, for example, on the 6600 XT, we had frame pacing issues and the same applies for the 7900 XT, but less. And with the 6950 XT, I also had frame pacing issues on the previous drivers, but on these new drivers, as you saw before, well, the line is like this. Beautiful. But what about the 5700 XT? Did the performance, at least on Dead Island 2, improve with the newer drivers? Or not really? Let's see what we got. It's all his fault, the selfish wanker! Will you stop standing there and find me some fucking shoes? Uh, hey, buddy. You got blood coming out of your ears. You know that? What? I can't hear you. I got blood coming out of my ears. Well, I mean, what are we going to do? Stay off the menu. People, this is Emma Jaunt. Mm -hmm. Of course you know what a huge star she is, Romero winner no less. We need to get her home to safety. Uh, what was that? Careful. Here goes.
And yes, strangely, the performance on the 5700 XT did not increase at all, even on Dead Island 2. It's strange, actually very strange, because I tested the 23.3.2 versus the 23.4.3, and the first drivers actually supporting Dead Island were the 23.4.2, so I, I was assuming that from those previous drivers more than a month ago to the newer ones the performance should have increased since it increased for the 6000 and 7000 series, but it seems it didn't. Now is AMD not caring anymore about the 5700 XT and the 5000 series cards and below, or do those cards, or are those cards actually just so so squished already that they can't actually uh, take take more performance out of them? Well, I don't really know. No more optimizations or no more performance to deliver. You choose. Leave in the comment sections what you think if AMD is actually doing a, a planned obsolescence or if they just can't take more performance. They just can't take more performance, sorry, out of the 5700 XT. I want to know your opinion. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Once again, leave your comment, leave your experience, leave not also your experience, but leave your experience and, and your opinions in the comment section, because that's really important for me and for us as a community, as an AMD community, as an NVIDIA Intel community, it doesn't really matter. The most important thing is to share experiences in order for the companies like AMD, for example, in this case, to fix the problems as soon as they can. And also, if you have problems, go to the bug AMD bug report tool, report the, the problem to them because they are actually fixing those problems that are sent via the bug report tool. So just do it. Don't be lazy, do it. And the problem will most likely be fixed in the versions in the, in the next driver versions to come. So if they can actually fix it, if not, it will be just another known issue like the, the idle power problem. <laughs> Once again, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and See you in the next one. Bye.